Hi, I'm here to talk about my upcoming app, uh, Bricks, maybe? Haven't quite figured out a name for it, but the um, name notwithstanding, at least I've got quite a few of the features done, and I figured I'd post another development video. So I thought this time I'd go through some of the uh, UI elements and how you would actually work with the um, with the bricks within the application. So we're starting here with a, a blank slate. We've got um, no pieces or anything. So let's uh, let's add a few pieces here. You uh, open up your piece drawer, and this here is still under development. So we have uh, some development graphics and whatnot still there. But what we have is a uh, selection of um, I think at the moment about 50 or so some odd pieces. You have uh, you know many different colors and. Um, shades and transparency as well to pick from. So let me start off with something a little bit simple. We'll go with uh, just a regular standard brick. We'll go with uh, orange here, I guess. We'll just place that there. And let's go for a, let's go for a green brick. Place that there. So connecting bricks is as simple as just dragging one brick to another. I'm missing it. Dragging one brick to another and connect. That's it. So, and just like your other favorite popular interlocking brick set, they all connect up at certain points so that you always have a nice alignment and everything like that. And of course, this for what you can zoom in and out and whatnot and add another brick. Let's say a new one. So there. So that's very simple, nice and easy. Just adding whatever bricks you want. And of course, you can place them wherever you want in the, in the 3D space. It's a full 3D environment. It gives you whatever flexibility you want to do, and you know, build whatever you want to build. And just add some more pieces here. Corner pieces. I don't know, you get the idea. So we have our bricks here, and what are we going to do with them? Uh, let's see. Now, the next thing is we want to actually rotate a piece. We want to interact with the piece. So let me select this piece here, and I'm going to hit the object rotate button here. And it's going to focus in on that piece, and I'll just zoom in a little bit. You see all the other pieces are there, but um, they've been made transparent. So you know where your piece is and the angle which it is in relation to all those other pieces, but uh, this way you get to focus on it. The pieces have a little grabber on it, so you can rotate it as you see fit. In all three dimensions, nice and easy. And, you know, one of the reasons the grabber idea was used is because it was very easy to figure out. Um, you know, there's many different ways of rotating a piece using two fingers or grabbing a corner and, and, and rotating it around, but you know, the problem was is that it's very difficult to, to figure out exactly how you're going to rotate it in those methods, especially on a 2D screen. So the grabber here I found was really nice and intuitive and really giving you a nice feel for how how it would work. I realize my fingers in the way there. So, uh, in addition to just being able to play with it as you like, there you also have some presets here. So I just uh, rotated according to one of these presets or whatnot. Of course, you can rotate around to see how your particular piece here works with the other models. In addition to that, let's say there's another piece on the screen that has a rotation that you want to match. You just click here, select that piece, and automatically matches. Click here to reset the rotation, the screen rotation to where you were. And if you want to just go back and reset to the piece's rotation to what it was, just hit the top button. So let's just rotate it to the side. Oops. And you're back to where you were. Connect them up. And there you are. Nice, easy peasy. 
So another problem that's in the 3D world, when you're working on a 2D screen, is getting lost. So you know, I want to rotate around something. I'll just grab a piece and just move it around and whatnot here. So I really want to focus in on, let's say, this red piece over here. What I can do is be able to move your center object around. So now I'm focused on that. Let's say now I want to focus on this piece over here. Then I just hold on. Now I can focus on that. And so on and so forth. This way it makes it nice and easy to be able to zoom around your world and figure out where you are and you don't get lost. <clears throat> so of course now the really fun piece, you've know, got all your primary kind of pieces here with which you can build your spaceships and cars and whatnot. Of course the piece de resistance in bad French is our friend the minifig. We've got all sorts of outfits and we'll make a little really happy guy in black sweater and blue jeans. No relation to anybody at Apple. We'll just put him right there in the world. And he's just another piece. You can zoom in on him as well. There he is. So, and of course, we can also rotate around him as well. If you want to, you can put him out really well. We'll just put him back the way he was there. So, you know, what are we going to do with him? We want to uh, move his arms or whatnot. We're going to select him. And we're going to edit him. And it gives us our little minifig editor screen. Just kind of fun. You just rotate around as you like. So let's say we want him to look over a little bit. Slip his arm. Raise his arm up and say hi. Get one leg going back. One leg going forward. There he is. Now he's walking and waving. I'm going to go back to our scene. Oops. Hands covered with that. We don't want to do that. <coughs> and just like any other piece, he's movable and so on and so forth. And naturally, if a piece gets in your way, just a little X. Poof. Gone. So, that's the basics of it. Um, have a couple other things. We've got preset camera angles here, so you can always find out where you are. I won't go through them all, but... Yeah, so, of course, you can change your background colors and whatnot. Pick a background that you like. In addition to that, now we have some additional backgrounds. So you can put in any fig in space, perhaps. Or a nice blue sky. Or sunset, romantic minifig. Mountaineer minifig. And of course, naturally, you can also select your own picture. So let's see, we'll do uh, favorite shots. Uh, let's do this. Seems like a nice shot there. There he is. There's a minifig guy just kind of walking on the hillside. There he is. He's got little minifig pieces kind of floating out there on the ether. So that is um, that's where we are right now. I'm hoping uh, we can get this finished within the next uh, few weeks. We're almost done. Just some uh, minor bugs. Get some performance issues dealt right. By the way, this is on a first generation iPod Touch. Uh, been testing it on a uh, 3GS and it really, really is fantastic and nice and smooth. But even on the first generation iPods and iPhones, beautiful, nice, smooth action. Get you some real fun activity. So, that's it, and um, hopefully the next video you see will be one that says, um, go buy it somewhere. Thanks.